well, I'm quite cheerful today because of the way the Labour Party is tearing itself over gender and now race issues. They're having a difficult time. You have to feel sorry for them. <laughs> Actually, no, you don't. Anyway, look, I'll get the business out of the way first. I'm Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. I'm also on Twitter, Gab and Parlour as at Granny Opterix. And that's where I post notifications whenever I put up a new video. You might subscribe to those because uh, YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, tends to be a bit careless about notifications. Also, uh, please help my channel, share, like, subscribe and if you're again YouTube if you're on YouTube check the subscription right and you can help me financially as well if you want uh, there's buy me a coffee or one of the other two links below okay I think that settles that let's get back to um, Nadia Whitten allow me to introduce you to the lady she was ordered by Keir Starmer to delete a tweet she made about Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak's caused a lot of trouble recently. I made a video about Biden, uh, a lot of falling into an elephant trap about that. And now uh, so has Nadia uh, Whittam. Uh, let me tell you about Ms Whittam, MP. She's a Labour MP and member of the uh, Socialist Campaign Group, whatever that is. She is of Indian descent. Her mother left the Labour Party a few years ago in protest at the removal of Clause 4 of the Labour Party Constitution. Now, Clause 4 is to do with taking industry, businesses, all that sort of thing, into public ownership as if any government has ever been good at running a business of any sort. Right. However, uh, why let uh, details get in the way of ideology? I'd say the mother, uh, the mother at least, was uh, pretty much a communist. And like most communists, also pretty much a hypocrite because she sent Nadia to a private school and later to an academy school. And academies around here are sort of semi-privately funded institutions. They're slightly apart from the usual Ministry of Education establishments. Some of them aren't that good, but the, the idea was that they were going to be a bit better than what the government ran. Uh, uh, generally speaking, not the government, the council. It's the councils who are responsible for these things. And if they're Labour councils, they're generally pretty bad. Anyway, uh, obviously her mother, uh, Miss Whittam's mother, uh, lost concentration at that point on her communist principles. And losing con concentration seems to be a family characteristic. Because despite the educational advantages Miss Whittam had, she managed only two A-levels. And I suspect it's not because uh, she's uh, a bit thick. Uh, I suspect it's because she can't be bothered with the details and uh, couldn't manage that for the A-levels either. After all, why let a few facts get in the way of ideology? That's much more important, isn't it? After Miss Whittam left school, one of the jobs she got involved with was as a hate crime project worker. I have no idea what that means, but I have little respect for someone who sees the world through the lens of hate crime. It's obviously left its impression on her mind, though. Look, bullying and assault sparked by racial hatred is dreadful, but it's a crime. It's a crime and there are laws to deal with crimes. So making it legally worse because the person has objectionable ideas about a certain race, well, it does lead you into all sorts of contradictions. What about, for instance, a certain holy book being full of nasty things about, well, Jews, for instance. I don't see any prosecutions about the dissemination of those uh, words of holy writ. So uh, what Miss Whittam said was that since Sunak wasn't a socialist, he, uh, well, he ain't black. Well, she didn't exactly put it that way. She said that it she said that his elevation to the post of First Lord of the Treasury isn't a win for Asian representation because he's a multimillionaire. And then that because he's so rich, uh, he has no sympathy for people who work 
for a living. Now, I don't know what she thinks he does all day, but I do know that ministers do work pretty hard. But obviously, she doesn't believe he is working. I find that a bit puzzling because she herself is an MP. Why would she think that MPs don't work for a living? Anyway, why let rational argument get in the way of ideological presuppositions? Sunak is personally responsible, according to her, for all the financial problems being suffered by this country. Of course, there are many other countries in exactly the same fix and, uh, judging by the statistics, worse. But of course, that's just a detail over here. And as we've learned, she doesn't seem to be that interested in details, which is probably uh, why she got only two A-levels. I keep saying I wouldn't have chosen Sunak uh, because I don't like backstabbers. But I have to confess that at least temporarily I'm coming round to the idea of having him as a prime minister, if only because of the trouble he's giving the Labour Party. Well, uh, Kemi Badenoch might have been better, but meanwhile we have Sunak. And since the Labour Party is having trouble defining what a woman is, uh, it seems they're also having trouble defining what an Asian is. Uh, <laughs> Keir Starmer has been forced to clarify that, or rather, Keir Starmer has been forced to clarify his view on the matter of the new Prime Minister with the following words. Now, where, where were they? Uh, oh, let me be very clear with you about the position of the Labour Party. Sir Keir is always being very clear about something. At least he says he's being very clear. Um, I, uh, I have my problems understanding his clarity, but no, never mind, let's carry on. Um, I was able to say that at pri I was able to say that at Prime Minister's questions, which was to welcome the first Asian Prime Minister as a real milestone for our country. I, I just want to point out. I was able to say that at Prime Minister's questions, which was to welcome the first... It's, it's not even a connected sentence, which means he's, his mind is spinning furiously at that point. And uh, in my opinion, uh, his other comment about uh, uh, the first Asian Prime Minister is exactly what's wrong with all socialists right now. Actually, I am quite... Um, yeah, something else. Asian. Asian. Asian is becoming a word that they use for anyone from the Indian subcontinent, Sikhs, Hindus and Muslims. But then they talk about Asian grooming gangs. And I'm quite sure the Hindus and the Sikhs rather, um, rather object to that, really. Anyway, so he's bundled, you know, all these brown people as Asians. And this is a real milestone for our country. And that, in my opinion, is exactly what's wrong with all sorts of socialism right now. Seeing people as a group, not an individual, and even worse, a group based on skin colour. I mean, uh, Nadia Whittam is herself a uh, somebody from uh, an Indian a subcontinental heritage, isn't she? So how can she be in the Labour Party when that's not her group anymore? That There's a bit of a problem there, isn't it? Anyway, uh, back to uh, Sunak. He's a slime ball. He's not an Indian slime ball. He's not an Asian slime ball. He's just a slime ball. And he's the Prime Minister, not a Hindu Prime Minister, not an Asian Prime Minister, but a Prime Minister. Unfortunately, there's something about socialism that seems to prevent people from seeing things that way, though. Go figure. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and T-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.